Welcome to the Accelerate Church TV broadcast. We are so glad that you were tuning in with us today. We are excited because Pastor Jeremy is currently teaching on Give No Place. This is a basic fundamental. As Christians, we are to give no place to the enemy. Let's head into the sanctuary right now with Pastor Jeremy File. Take your position of authority over the devil. Know this. I'm going to give you ammunition for this. God's plan is for you to rule and reign in life, not life to be so full of tumultuousness that it dictates to you. That's why you've got to know verses like Romans chapter 5 and verse 17. Know it in your heart. It's God's plan that I reign in life. It says here, Romans 5, 17, for if by the one man's offense, that's Adam back in the garden, death reigned. That's the curse. Death, everything that goes along with what Adam brought to this planet. It rained through the one. I like these words. Much more. I want you to say that with me. Ready? I'm going to count to three. One, two, three. Much more. Come on, everybody say it. Much more. You're supposed to, what? Much more. Rain. How do I do that, Pastor? You, the who here is those who receive abundance of grace. Now, jot this down. I'm not going to preach or the turn to it. I've preached on it a lot. Titus chapter 2, verses 11, 12, and 13 tell you that the grace of God that brings salvation teaches you. Now, catch this. It teaches you to deny ungodliness, to deny worldly lust, and to live sober, righteous, and godly Right now. Everybody say, right now. Right now. So get this. Get this. you got to catch this. This verse hinges. You know what a hinge does, right? If you don't, let me just explain. When you go out these doors today, you should be glad there's hinges. Or else, I guess you could just push it down. But that's kind of a mess. Especially if someone's on the other side. Thankfully, that hinge makes it open. And then when you go to your car, thank goodness you don't have to just take that car door and throw it to the side and get in. No, there's a hinge that makes this a lot easier. So this verse hinges, it swings on those who receive an abundance of grace. Now get this, you've got to hear an abundance from your teacher that says, do not live ungodly, do not give in to worldly lust, live sober, live righteous right now, right now. Those that receive an abundance of that and of the gift of righteousness will Rain. Oh, you got to say those two words with me. I know I'm having you repeat a lot, but you got to catch this. Say this with me. I'm going to count to three. We're going to say, will rain. You ready? One, two, three. Will rain. Those are powerful words. That means you will take a position where you're in charge. There's a new sheriff in town. <laughs> because of what Jesus did. You don't have to be punked out by the devil. You don't have to just be flattened out by the devil. No. I will reign in life through the one, Jesus Christ. Well, somebody ought to raise their hand right now and say, thank you, Lord. I reign in life through Jesus. Woo, praise God. Now, that was worth you coming here too, wasn't it? As long as you keep defining yourself or you live like it, maybe you don't say it, but you might live the lifestyle of a victim. You will not reign in life. You can't read that verse and say that those that receive an abundance of grace and the gift of righteousness, they're going to be victims after victims after victims in every situation. No, what you see is that you will reign. I will reign. Say it with me. I will reign, I will reign. In, life in life through Jesus. Jesus. Say it again. I will reign, I will reign. In, life in life through Jesus. Jesus. Now, Aaron said this, words are seeds. And sometimes when you don't feel it at all, that's the kind of thing you need to say. Because it's based on the Bible. You're speaking on the authority of God Almighty when you speak that. But see, you're going to have to listen to your teacher, Grace. That's your empowerment. That says, say no to the world. When I was a kid, they, they, it was so simple. They said, say no to drugs. And a lot of people said yes. And their life has been terrible. All you had to say was no. But notice... Who is in authority? People act like, well, the devil, he just, 
He just did this and that. Yeah, I know, but you gave him a spot. Otherwise, he couldn't do it because he has zero. Everybody say zero. Zero authority. So that's why this series is so important because as I read scriptures like this and others I'm going to show you this morning, I realize, wait a minute, I'm in the position of authority. That's why sometimes you have to remind yourself of this. When you're in battles, when maybe your kids are sick, or maybe you and your wife are at each other, to say, in Jesus' name. Now, don't, don't rebuke your wife, husbands. Wives, don't rebuke your husband. Get back for a minute and start rebuking the devil. Who do you think is going to attack two Christians coming into marriage? It's going to be the devil. Why? One can put a 1,000 to flight. Two can put 10,000. Do you think he wants you to get a hold of that supernatural, superabundant power in the spirit? No, he wants to bring division. You know where else he'll bring division? When it comes to your relationship with your spiritual leaders. He will not fight you uh, to go down to the Jiffy Lube or the pit stop. You take your choice. Go down there, get your oil changed. There's not going to be any tumultuousness. The only reason you would change is if they did something that messed it up, right? Here's where tumultuous comes. When it comes to when you say, I'm going to be planted. I feel God's call. I believe you're called to be my pastor. Now there's a man, and I, you know, I love him, and I think he sometimes watches, so he may be watching, and he knows I love him. But he had the uh, audacity to call me and say, Pastor, I was in church, and I'm not a crier, but boy, I was crying Sunday. Because I was there, and the Lord spoke to me, and he said, that man's called to be your pastor, come and submit. And I said, hey, I appreciate that. This is not the first time I've heard that. So here's what I'm going to tell you. It's going to be proved out in the days from here. And he's not here. No, I'm not mad about it. I'm not angry about it. Look at all who are here. You know, look at who knows watching. He even watching. All I'm trying to say is this. If God's the one that speaks to you to do that, to be planted in the house of the Lord so you can flourish, who are you to uproot yourself and say you're going to prosper when you uproot yourself? Who are you then to give in to the temptation, think about it, of the agitation you get to your pastor? Now, I may not be your pastor, and that's okay. Maybe you've said, well, I thought you were, but I, I think after all you're not. Now, one way you can know that I truly am is if I've ever, uh, you know, got to know you well enough to be able to see your life and to bring correction and to love you. If you've ever seen that, then you know what? And then you say, okay, I'm starting to recognize something. This is where I'm called. And I do want to say one thing. Because I've heard it from multiple sources, not one, not two, multiple sources, that some of the things I've said has made you think I don't want to meet with you or I won't be there for you. Listen, if you remember at the beginning of the year, I showed you who our flock care pastors were. And for illustration, I talked to you about Miss Marna Moon, who is in the hospital this morning. And they, I found out about this about an hour before I was supposed to be at the golf tournament. Now, now look, I want you to know this because I know this is going to make some people angry. Pastor, you went and played golf when a church member was in the hospital. You know what? I called one of the flock care team and said, can you go? I know you're not going to that. I've already pre-scheduled. I've got three other guys counting on me. We, they're paying money. We're raising money. I need someone to go because I won't be able to get there. Now, here's what you have to realize. When delegated authority goes on my behalf, that's the same as me showing up. Because I'm only here as a pastor on delegated authority from your shepherd as a under-shepherd to help keep you from going right off the cliff and dying. And there are certain doctrines and there are certain preachers you need to stay away from, and they've made themselves more obvious even this week. Why you need to hear not to tithe is only going to keep you from being blessed. I'll just say it this way. Jesus took the curse on the cross. That's a fact. Okay? Okay. But he was established as our high priest after the order of Melchizedek. Melchizedek preceded the law of Moses. The law of Moses was God's love manifested to his people to show his people his ways. You can't love without law. You don't like that, do you? I know. I mean, like our flesh fights with that, huh? You're not under the ceremonial law of Moses. That is not what I'm preaching. But you are under several commands as New Testament believers, such as one Aaron brought up a while ago. When you see a command in the Bible, give, you say, well, I don't, that's not for me. It says who? Are you your own Lord? See, if you're a New Testament believer and he says give or he says forgive, 
And you say, no, I can't. Well, you're saying then that what someone, actually, actually what you're saying is that you're higher than Jesus. You're saying what someone did to you is a greater offense than you breaking God's law. That's what you're saying. In other words, you operate at a higher level than God himself. Accelerate Christian School is located in Amarillo, Texas and offers individualized learning for students kindergarten through 12th grade. With scripture-filled curriculum, daily devotions, and weekly chapel services, our number one priority is instilling God's Word on the heart of the next generation. Our regional and international student conventions encourage and train our mighty warriors in competitions both academically and physically. With events in academics, athletics, exhibits, music, and platform, your student will be challenged and inspired to develop their God-given gift and talent. For more information regarding Accelerate Christian School, please visit our website at acceleratechristianschool.cc or you can call our office, 806-418-8913. If you define yourself as a victim, you will not reign in life. Maybe this morning things aren't going your way. Maybe it's not going the way you'd like. You need to lean on a verse that has given me strength many times in many battles. It's in Romans chapter 8. And I want you to look at this. Lay your eyes on it. Verse 37. It says, yet in all these things. I just like the way this is worded. Maybe you're pressed on every side today. Maybe you feel like giving up. Maybe you don't. No matter what situation you're in, in all these things, we are more than conquerors through him who loved us. Woo! You are more than a conqueror. I said you are more than a conqueror. I said it. You are more than a conqueror. You are going to win the battle, and you're going to have life left over after the battle. You're more than a conqueror. Say it. I'm more, I'm more than, a conqueror. than a conqueror. Say it again. I'm more than a conqueror. I'm more than a conqueror. More than a conqueror. You need to tell your head that when you're dealing with a headache. You need to tell your back that when it starts trying to lay you out on the floor. I'm more than a conqueror in Jesus' name. When people are talking bad about you and you feel like giving up, you're more than a conqueror. You're more. You're not just going to conquer and win. You're more than that. You're not a mere human. I, I'm God-possessed this morning. You can sit there if you want. I'm God-possessed. I'm telling you, you're more than a conqueror. You are more than a conqueror. You are going to win. I said you're going to win. Whether you've experienced it up to now or not has nothing to do with the future. You've got to make a decision that I am who God said I am. I can do what God said I can do. Wow, you got to know this is his plan. you got to know this is a staple in your life. Whew. Now, I want to focus here today on one more area where many people have given the enemy a place. You'll find it in the book of Revelation, chapter 2 and 3, written to seven churches after the cross, after the resurrection, after Jesus' ascension to heaven. He delivered this message to John the Apostle, who they had tried to boil in oil, and he wouldn't die. I'll never forget when I found out he was boiled in oil, not once, not twice, three times, and still wouldn't die. They dropped that dude. They said his skin was kind of crispy, but he wouldn't die because the love of God on the inside of him. So they said, you know what we're going to do? We're going to exile you to the island of Patmos. You're too crazy, turning the world upside down. So God, just like he is, I love it, says, okay, he's over there. Now he can really focus. I'm going to drop the revelation of Jesus Christ on him. And it starts out right into the churches. And you might find this interesting. The church is mentioned 19 times in the first three chapters of the book of Revelation. Chapter 4, verse 1, John hears a voice that says, come up hither, which we're going to hear real soon. Because there's a great catching away day happening where those that are alive and well in Christ, you know what's going to happen? They remain and they're alive. They're going to be caught up. That's it, rapture drill, right? Yeah. Some of you are doing that jumping there in praise and worship today. Just a rapture drill. Don't let that bother you if that's not your style. One of these days you're going to be caught up if you're alive in the Lord. Yeah. And so he hears come up hither. And in chapter 4, 
what happens is this transition to heaven. John is caught up there. And then you start seeing in chapter 6, the tribulation period, which hasn't happened yet, but is very soon to happen. He describes it in detail and in order. The reason I know it's in order is because in Revelation 1 and verse 19, the Lord Jesus Christ told John, write this book in order. The things that have been, the things that are now, and the things that will be after the things that are now. So he starts out talking about the things that are now, the church. And then he says, let me show you what will happen hereafter. That's the same Greek word, after these things. And he hears, come up hither. And then the church isn't mentioned throughout the entire description of the tribulation period, not once. People say, well, it says saints. I know, but before that it said church. So there's going to be people saved apart from the church during the tribulation period. And Revelation chapter 14 will tell you why. Because angels will be in the atmosphere preaching the gospel. I always ask people that think the church is going to be here, why are angels doing that then and not now? Because now it's our great commission. It's our job to preach. But the church won't be here, so they're going to be preaching the gospel because God loves humans so much, he don't want one to perish. Woo! Welcome to Eschatology 101 this morning. But see, I'm, I'm so excited about this. We're going to be in heaven. When it starts out, Jesus says, okay, John, you got to write about the things you see right now. And to all seven churches, there's one thing that's similar with all seven. And I'm going to go through this quick, but I want you to see this. Seven verses in Revelation starts in 2-7. Every church hears what Jesus said. Here's how he ended his letter to every church. He who has an ear... How many in here have an ear? You know, you could get yours chopped off like Malchus in the Bible, and God wants to restore that. If Malchus is there to, to take Jesus to crucify him, and Peter slashed his ear off, and Jesus said, here, dude, put his ear back on. And he wanted to hear Malchus. He wants to heal you, a blood-bought believer in Jesus. Amen. Because God's into restoring Hearing, but now get this. When Jesus is writing this, he is a spirit being. You're a spirit being too. He's talking about ears spiritually. So even if you're missing your ears, or even if you were deaf and couldn't hear, God wants to open that ear, by the way. But let me tell you this. You can still hear something spiritually. So it's spiritual in nature. That's what you've got to catch here. He that has an ear, let him hear. What the Spirit says to who? Well, this is so plain. The churches. Now, I said this a while ago because I see the churches mentioned right there. It's mentioned 19 times in the first three chapters. Not mentioned once during the tribulation period. Israel's not mentioned once during the first three chapters. There are the first, all the letters to the churches. I'll put it that way. All the description of the tribulation are all Jewish terms, 285 of them. Without the church mentioned once, showing us that it's the time of Jacob's trouble, Jeremiah 30, verse 7. It's the time of Jacob's trouble. It's Daniel's 70th week prophesied for Israel and the city Jerusalem. Not for the church. There's seven years left that God prophesied through Daniel that he owes to Israel. And you're going to see when the church is out of here that God operates a little bit different on earth, kind of like he used to. I would just tell you this, if you're hearing this preacher right now say these words, whether you're watching by television, streaming, by radio, or in person, you better get right with God. You don't want to miss the day where we're caught up. Because this earth is going to change, and I mean quick. Guys, it's primed. It's primed. Right now. Now notice, the enemy wants you to get caught up on little things right now, so you don't obey what this says. Because if you're distracted, you won't hear the Spirit of God. We believe in linking up with like-minded believers, and that opportunity comes twice a month where we get to come together with our life links and dig into the current series that Pastor Jeremy is preaching on. We eat together, we laugh together, we pray together, and we build those godly relationships that are so vital to our Christian walk. We must be intentional with who we surround ourselves with, so we invite you to join us for LifeLinks happening on the second and fourth Sunday nights of every month. For more information regarding LifeLinks and where they meet, you can text the word LifeLinks to the number 74121, or you can head over to our website at acceleratechurch.cc. Or hey, you can give us a call at 806 418 
888-888-8913. We look forward to seeing you in the next LifeLink. Anger and envy feed right into a lack of hearing. When you're angry, you don't hear right. Illustration. I love my wife. I've been with her 20 years. I'll be with her for the next 100 if the Lord gives us that much time. I love my wife. But she can make me mad. And when she makes me mad, every action she takes or inaction she takes, I read into it more. Why? Because I was angry. Envy, the same way. If someone says, here, I want to give you a card, Miss Aaron. You're such a blessing. Now, you got to know this about me. I'm not envious at all. I'd rejoice if that happens. But if I had envy in my heart, I'd say, I always give her a card, not me. What is that? Envy. Now, what did that do? That affected the way I heard. Because what I should hear in the spirit when someone gives is, uh uh-oh, they're getting ready to receive a blessing. Let me tell you what that looks like here. I'll give you real illustrations sometimes. But a couple was sitting here, and Garrett was giving the offering message, and it ticked them off. Maybe that, maybe you could relate to that. Maybe it wasn't Garrett. Maybe it was what you heard this morning. I don't know. But don't tell me about it, because that's my wife, and she brought the truth today. I'll be munching on. I almost took a whole page of notes myself. Why? Came to hear. Well, here's the point. This couple said that. It made me mad. Now, this person noticed they knew me. They had my number. So this isn't someone that you think is a fence sitter. They said, Pastor, that message really irked me this morning. And so I recognized, "Uh uh-uh. See, without articulating, it was envy trying to latch a hold. Because of a testimony he shared of how God had blessed him. So this individual told me, you know what we're going to do? We are going to sow a very significant seed, thousands of dollars, into Garrett's life. Now, hold on. That's a test for pastor. Am I going to be envious? Well, what about me? No. So none of us have room for envy. I said, praise God. Here's what I heard in the spirit. And I even told the couple this. I said, get ready to watch God show up and show out. And it is exactly what he's done. <laughs> and I rejoice and get excited. But but you could learn from that. That's why I bring that up. You could learn what to do. You're saying so thousands. If somebody is ticking you off and they're in this fellowship, in this rare church, you got to understand it's rare. To hear the word preached like this today is rare in this end time hour. I asked men that travel. I was with one yesterday, played golf with me. It's rare. Find churches that are alive and excited about the Word of God and have the Spirit of God and people run to the front and worship. But people are, real, are willing to ignore all of that over a hurt feeling and miss God. Here's your answer. I don't know how this could happen, but let's say Andy just really ticks you off because he serves a lot more than you do. So envy fills you. And he's always serving up there. I don't know what in the way I'm trying to just be buddy-buddy with pastor. Well, that's, that doesn't, that's not the way it works. He serves because he has his eyes on the Lord. And I've seen I've commended you before, but I commend you again publicly for that. He's up here. I mean, I can get a notification. Someone's up here in the middle of the night. I'm like, I won't even look anymore. It's Andy. <laughs> he's up here cleaning, doing something. That's the heart he has. But see, I say that, and someone else could hear that in this room and get envious. And if that's you, you need to sow a seed. Andy don't need your money. But you got to get rid of envy. And that's what you got to see. If if you're angry, if you're envious, it will affect your hearing. So you get envious. and And I don't know anyone envious of Andy. So this is a total fabricated illustration, but it proves the point. If someone's dealing with that envy... It will affect the way you hear. Because the only thing I just said was nothing but God testimonies about Andy. That's all that was. Well, that makes me so angry. Why? Because you ain't doing nothing lazy. I mean, does it have does it take talk like that to get through to you? Roger, Roger, got your ears on? Are you hearing what I'm saying today? 
Now, Jesus said, take heed, watch you here. Luke 8, 18, here's what he said. Take heed how you hear. And then he goes into the same thing. For whoever has, to him more will be given. And whoever does not have, even what he seems to have will be taken from him. People all the time. I mean, I've heard it multiple times in my life. That doesn't seem fair. It's hinging on your hearing. You don't have ears to hear. The Spirit is talking every day. You don't have ears to hear. It's going to cost you. We are responsible for our hearing. Two points from today's message, and we're going to have to end. Time is just ticking. One, pay attention to what you hear. Will you do that this week? Will you commit to do that? Pay attention to what you hear. Two, pay attention to how you hear. You got that? Pretty simple. Two points, no poem. Pay attention to what you hear. Pay attention to how you hear. What is the overall theme? Hearing matters. Print you a shirt and wear that everywhere. Hearing matters. It matters whether or not you hear God's voice. It matters how you hear. What are you putting into it? Now, Aaron said this about tithing and giving. It opens you up to hear. But did you know serving does that same thing? Folks, be honest. There are thousands of voices fighting for your attention, even this week. You may not be exposed to them, but they're out there. There's, th there's more than thousands, actually. But since you're in the fight of life, you better make sure you're hearing things right. Again, check the fruit. I have a saying. I've never heard anyone else say it. I'm sure there's others that have. Fruit never lies. Fruit never lies. No, the problem is not on Jesus' end because he's perfect. In fact, I got to share, I was going to stop, but I got to share this with you. Hebrews, I'm not just going to prolong this. You just got to look at this. Hebrews 5 9 says, and having been perfected, he's perfect. Jesus became the author of eternal salvation to everyone across the board. What does it say? All those that obey him. See, so the problem's not on Jesus' end. It's going to be on our end. Obedience is the result of good hearing. Write it down. Obedience is the result of good hearing. Once again, thank you so much for tuning in to today's A Television Broadcast. Well, that does wrap up today's message, that does not conclude the message in its entirety. If you would like to hear the rest of this message, you can head over to AccelerateChurch.cc and click on the Sermons tab. Or if you're in the Amarillo area, we would love to meet you in person. We are located at 4400 South Crockett Street here in Amarillo. Our service times are Wednesday evening at 7 p.m. and Sunday mornings at 10 a.m. Hey, if we don't see you in person, we'll catch you on the next television program.